this isn't my story. Yep. It's his. It's his beautiful story of, of his faithfulness to, to deliver me through some really wildfires. And so for me, when you don't feel accepted yeah. by the two humans that are supposed to accept you, what it does is, number one, it, it makes it really difficult to understand God the Father in any capacity. Right. Um, and so with that disconnect, and then having a disconnect from your earthly parents, it, it was my whole life. And I struggle with it even now, right? Am I doing and like, are the people going to love me? You are wonderful. Like every single person on planet earth, whether they understand or know it or not, was made in the image of God. And he's awesome. Like the most awesome. And if you're made in that image, that means you're awesome too. Yeah. And man, if, if people understood that and not in a prideful way, but in a way it's like, wow, I am precious. Yeah. Like I'm incredible because the one who made me is, man, I think the world to be different. God, we just thank you so much for Pastor Josh and just his heart. Um, his story is one of, of redemption and turnaround. And God, we are just so thankful um, for him, his family, his investment. But God, more specifically, the transformation that you're doing in them, doing in the people that they're impacting. God, we know that um, through his testimony, I pray, God, people would just be encouraged, that they would... They would see themselves in the middle of the story, that they would see these moments of just how you were present all along the way, even when we don't see it. And God, they would just be so encouraged that, God, you're always near. That when we draw near to you, you draw near to us, that there isn't uh, a, a, a unmovable wall that we can't climb. But God, you you desire us to give back to you because you first have given us a gift. And so we're just so thankful for that, that this podcast would, would reach many with that message of freedom and redemption. We pray this in your son's mighty and powerful name. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited. I get the opportunity to sit down with you <laughs> of all people. Yeah. Um, you know, Josh, uh, you, uh, we call you a pastor. Yeah. Um, you oversee the Next Steps area at our Love Church North Omaha campus yep. alongside of your wife, Christy. And so some of you that are watching today, you've, you've got the chance to see Miss Christy's story. If you haven't, we'll link it in the description below. Um, but these make up the whole of the parts of the Furlong family. If you include Caleb, of course. We'll get him on a pod sometime. Yeah, too. we'll get him He's on the podcast uh, at some point. He's your 16-year-old son. Almost 17. Yeah, right. Coming up in just uh, yeah. a couple weeks, actually. Um, Caleb will be 17, which is wild because uh, he started serving when he was nine. Yeah. Which means that also means that you've been serving for the last seven years. Yeah. And so just a, so cool when I had the opportunity to come to love. Um, some of you have seen me before. I'm the executive pastor. My name's Pastor Adam. And I have the I have the honor of leading alongside of you for a couple of years yeah. in the production area, and it was fun because uh, when we uh, first came together, um, I don't think that either one of us knew what to think of each other. True. And so it's just I think this is fun, yeah. like the no, fact that we great. get to hear uh, more of your story today. And so what I want to do just to kind of kick us off because um, you. I think it's it's interesting. You you dress a certain way, you wear a certain hat, you have a beard, <laughs> but I would say it's inspired by somebody, right? Really? That you you've been marked specifically mm -hmm. by a pastor who um, has taught you so much. You probably wouldn't be here today without his influence in your life. And so I would love to just hear a little bit more uh, before we go all the way back about that, Pastor Steve, like how mm. that has kind of changed your life and. Specifically, what I want to know is, um, because I think this sets up who you are. Yeah. And I think it, it's really meaningful for people to see now, um, even in contrast. Yeah. So, wow. When I think about just the impact that, that Pastor Steve and, I mean, their whole family, the the first small group I was in was Capus. And so if you don't know, Capus is, is his son-in-law. Yeah. And so 
it was right there the whole time and I didn't see it. And so what's interesting is right after I get saved, we're in this small group. And in that season, we were just talking about Caleb. We had so like, there was so much anger in him in that season and we're, you know, therapy and all these things. And at one point joy says to Christy, why don't you just take him to see my mom? And so uh, it's his ladies. That's what, what Caleb says. He goes and meets <laughs> the fresh start ladies and they walk him through a process. But part of the deal was that you and Christy have to learn fresh start. Yeah. Right. Because we can't teach it to him and then expect him to retain it if his parents don't know it. And in that season, you know, there's a rebellion that kind of sparked in us because we were in a small group on Tuesday nights that yeah. we loved so dearly. Um, and we're like, okay, we're going to be obedient. We're going to go to fresh start. So we go and we're like, ah, I don't know how I feel about this. And what's interesting is the first time we go, Steve was actually in Africa. And so I don't even get to meet him the first yeah. time, but we put our names in for small group and we're like, okay, cool. They'll call us when they're ready. And a couple months go by, we get called and we join our first small groups. And from that point, I realized that it's like, whoa, when I got saved, he forgave me of my sin, but now I'm recognizing that there was so much more to unpack and uncover that like I had stored so deeply in my heart. And man, Steve, for those that didn't get to know him, I mean, was such a man of joy, hmm. which is wild to like his daughter's name is Joy. Right. Um, the first thing that he'd say to anybody is you're wonderful. And it wasn't like a, oh, hi, how are you doing surface? Like yeah. he was looking at you with eyes of destiny saying, you are wonderful because you were made wonderfully. Wow. I know the one who made you, and this is what he says about you and over you. And you receive it. Maybe not at first. Maybe at first you think he's a little bit crazy. Um, because for being a, a man who was in his 70s, like he had so much energy. It was, <laughs> I mean, I hope to have half that much energy even now. Right. Um, and so we fall in love with Fresh Start. It was like an upgrade on my salvation. Yeah. And so now, uh, as a matter of fact, just, just recently I'm, I'm sitting with a man and, and I say to him, it's like, man, one of the first questions you should expect to hear from me is how's your heart? Yeah. Are you taking care, taking care of your heart? Because one of the things that I learned was that everything that comes out of me, it came from there. And so, yeah, it's, it's how I live, you know, when, when I'm doing it right, you know, I don't get it right all the time, but when I'm firing on all cylinders, it's because I started there. Right. And from that place, I can love my wife. I can love my son. I can love the community wow. that the Lord has called me to, to shepherd. Well, good thing you got a long way to go. Right. You're only 42. Right. So you've got at maybe, least 30 years. I'm maybe halfway there. Yeah. So it's so cool because uh, for those of you that are watching this podcast, maybe you're a part of Love Church, maybe you're from around the world and you're like, I have no idea who Pastor Steve is. Uh, Pastor Steve started a ministry. Yeah. Uh, here in Omaha called Fresh Start. And really the mission of Fresh Start was to help people process yeah. the issues of their heart. Yeah. The Bible says that out of the heart flows the wellspring of life, that yeah. we know that the wellspring can be good or bad or bad. And we have a choice. Yeah. And this has just marked your ministry. And I think I wanted to start there. I felt like the Lord was even speaking to me in that moment to bring that up. I'm, I'm even hearing for people on the other side of the lens that I think there are people today that needed to hear that yeah. they're wonderful. Yeah, they are. You are wonderful. Like every single person on planet earth, whether they understand or know it or not was made in the image of God. And he's awesome. Like the most awesome. And if you're made in that image, that means you're awesome too. Yeah. And man, if, if people understood that and not in a prideful way, but in a way it's like, wow, I am precious. Yeah. Like I'm incredible because the one who made me is, man, I think the world to be different. What's so beautiful though, is that I think as you look back on your life, there were so many opportunities for you not to believe that. Oh, most there of my There were life. so many circumstances in your life where you're like, it's, it, it's almost comical that you would say yes. that to people at this point. You know, I, and I, I wanna go back because um, I think a, a stop along the way was, Hey, for you, you know, you're 42 now, 41 years ago, mm. 
you were left with a single parent. And I would love for you just to tell that story of, yeah. you know, obviously the recollection of other people to you right. at that season of your yeah. life. But take me back to that point of, you know, you're now telling people they're wonderful. Simultaneously, you had a parent that said you aren't worthy of right. sticking around for it. Yeah. So my folks get together. My dad's 15, 16 years old, right? My mom gets pregnant. Um, wow. He's 17 when I'm born, right? And just over a year later, my mom leaves. And mm -hmm. like you said, I've heard so many different variations of how that went down. And so what I can say is that I know how it ended. And that was, I was with my dad. Yeah. We were in and out of my grandparents' house while he's growing up, right? Right. He's a kid. I, I mean, it's true. I think about like my son is about to but be 17. 17. Yeah. I would, I would probably lose my mind if he's like, Hey, you're going to be a grandpa. Um, yeah. and yet that is exactly the situation that my dad put my grandparents in and my grandparents and I have had several conversations. Uh, his, his father passed away, um, almost 30 years ago. And, but along the way, you know, talking to my grandma, she's like, I always had to keep pushing you guys out. I was hoping that he'd grow up. Yeah. Unfortunately, he never did. Um, my dad, you know, love him, right? No disrespect on him, but he was really selfish. Um, he pursued a criminal life. Like his life ambition was to be a member of the Hells Angels, ultimately achieving that goal. Yeah. What was interesting is I've pretty much always looked like this. Right. I've always like I was a Boy Scout. Right. I was so it was like I was a nerdy kid. Right. So to think that I've got, you know, a grimy biker dad. Right. We were it's true. paradoxical. Right. Like it yeah. was so interesting to look at the pair of us. Um, if you've ever seen the movie Twins with Danny DeVino, and Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's like that was me and my dad, mm. like so different from one another. Um and so I've got a mom who leaves and I have no, like, no relationship yeah. through my whole childhood and a dad that I can't connect with. And so the, the lesson like that he continued to tell me was like, Hey, just don't do what I'm doing and you'll be okay. Yeah. And that's so far from the actual truth. I would just be curious for you then, you know, you, you had shared that kind of out of that season, you're, you're kind of pursuing the American yeah. dream. Right. Right. Like at this point, like it is college and wife and kids. How, tell me, how did you go from having a, a biker gang dad yeah. to that point? Like, what were you thinking wow. even in that moment? You know, I think I look back on it and we talk a lot in Fresh Start about the vows that we make. And the vow was like, I'm not going to be like my parents. Right. Like I, but what's interesting is there's a, there's a spirit about that as well. Like my dad told me when I was little, he's like, you were so good. Cause I asked him, I was like, why didn't you teach me how to be a criminal? Like most dads try to impart who they are on their kid. He goes, I couldn't, he goes, you were just good. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you talk about like the faithfulness of God. Yeah. You know, when we talk about where scripture says that it's like, no, he, he knew you before the foundations of the earth. Like that's my life. Yeah. There's no way that I am who I am today. If he didn't have that plan the whole time. Now, whether I agreed with it, recognized it or any of that, um, you know, was most of the time. No, I had no idea, but wow. Right. For my dad to even recognize it's like, no, there was something different about you. The challenge is you hear that as a kid and it's like, you're so different that I can't connect with you either. Mm -hmm. And so the enemy used that, right, to just deepen that wound of you're not good enough. Um, while the Lord at the same time is trying to like call me to himself. I want to I want to ask you more about that. You just use the phrase that feeling of not good enough. Mm, yeah. Unpack that a little bit, because I, I would be curious, is, is that something you felt like you've walked with for most of your life yeah and if so like what what has been your journey with that phrase yeah i think i didn't recognize it right that that's what it was this unworthiness this um right because every person i think longs for acceptance and mm -hmm. many get it 
right? In some way, shape or form. And so for me, when you don't feel accepted yeah. by the two humans that are supposed to accept you, what it does is number one, it, it makes it really difficult to understand God the Father in any capacity. Right. Um, and so with that disconnect, and then having a disconnect from your earthly parents, it, it was my whole life. And I struggle with it even now, right? Am I doing and like, are the people going to love me? Right. Am I, am I worth enough? Right. And so when I say it's like, man, like all of you, you, everybody, like you're awesome. You're amazing. You are wonderful. I can say it, but do I believe it? Mm. A lot of times, no. Right. That's, that's my struggle is that I believe it about everybody else, but because of those circumstances, I often, I have to like, I have to preach it to myself. Yeah. Right. And that's why I believe so deeply that like the Lord allowed us to enter fresh start the, exactly the way that he did, because it's, it's what allowed me to learn. It's like, no, this is true for you as well. Yeah. I, I would be curious then, you know, I think if I'm sitting on the other side of the screen, I'm saying, okay, I see you sitting here now. <laughs> you, you're a pastor. You help people with their heart. You, you feel like this, you know, worthiness issue. Yeah. Well, what changed? Right. So along the journey, um, my first marriage fails, right? So I'm pursuing the American dream. I've got a good job. I've got this family. We've got two kids. Um, and I make some pretty critical mistakes, right, in that marriage. Um, and, and so it starts to disintegrate. Simultaneously, my dad is in prison. His, he was in federal prison. Um, he's getting out as, like, this chaos in my marriage is beginning. Um, but as he gets out, he says to me, it's like, hey, son, I'm going to get remarried and I'm going to move away. So I've already not had him around for almost a decade. He misses everything and he tells me I'm going to bounce. And so I think it, it deepens the wound, right? It causes further disconnect in my marriage. Uh, a couple of years go by and my second daughter is born and my dad comes back home because his marriage is failing. Mm -hmm. So like here you have father and son whose marriages are falling apart and he says, Hey, I'm going back to the life. Like I'm going back to, to the way things were and not a couple, uh, maybe months later he gets killed as a part of that life. And so, and I share all of that because this is like the culmination of all of these circumstances, right? I look at this pile of life and I'm like, if there's a God, right, is probably the statement that I've used in that season. If there's a God, he doesn't like me very much, right? Because my friends wouldn't do this to me. And I enter this really dark season, you know, of, of addiction and selfishness and promiscuity and just the worst kind of living. And about a year later, I meet Christy. And she's, I mean, check out her pod, because I mean, she's walked a wild life up to this point as well. So like we collide in this moment and fall just radically in love. Like it starts just weird. You guys um, met online, right? Yeah. So we meet online. Caleb thinks we met in a gas station. I don't know where he comes <laughs> up with that. Um, yeah. So we meet online. What which year is, was this? 2014. So we, okay. so as, as we're recording this, we just hit like a 10 year mark. Of Come being on, together. man. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, married for eight and right out of the gate, like I'm asking her on our first date, like, Hey, if things work out, we're not going to get married, but can I adopt your son? Because like, I'm talking out of a wound, right? Like yeah. marriage failed. I don't want to do that again, but I love my kids and I could potentially love your kid. Um, and then the next day or maybe two days later, I tell her, it's like, I don't want to see you again. And then like two or three days later, I call her and say, Hey, let's make this work. And from that moment, of saying, let's make this work. We've essentially been inseparable. There's been a few times where we've been apart, but otherwise like it's been us side by side. And that's before I said yes to Jesus. So we're trying to bring these two families together, we're smashing it all together. And you fast forward a year and a half, we're about to get married. And I had quit my good job because we're going to open a bakery. Right. Cause she's a phenomenal baker. Yeah. And by we, I mean, she's going to do all the work and I'm going to be lazy. 
and the Lord's not going to bless that. Just just in case you you wanted to know. Um, so that just totally falls apart. We end up moving back in with her folks. Um, and then through all of that, I come home from, I get a, a new job and I come home from work one day, just absolutely miserable. And I look at her and I say, I think God's missing. Wow. We've had no faith conversations up to this point. This isn't something that she would have ever expected me to say. And she goes, well, what do you like? Did you lose him? And kind of taken aback. She goes, what are we going to do about it? So we start going to church. Um, and through what I would call like radical obedience on her part, she just follows. She's mm-hmm. like, okay, like, I'm going to let you lead. And we go and we leave and she'd say, is this what we're looking for? I'm like, nope, this isn't it. And she'd say, well, what about Calvary? Right. Cause at the time love church who we are now was still a Calvary chapel. Um, and She's like, what about Calvary? Like, I met Jesus there when I was in treatment. I was like, what would my family say about your weirdo church? And so we just keep going. And eventually I'm like, okay, fine. Like, if I'm gonna, if it's gonna be different, it's gotta be different. So let's go try it. So we walk in, we're still in a high school. I'm like, high school's not church. This music isn't church, right? I get a hug from Lois, who's Pastor Todd's mom. I'm like, you don't get hugs from people that you're not related to. Um, but man, the first thing I heard PT say, it was, it, it's, it's wild to think about because he said, you can't earn it. I already knew that part. That was the part I was struggling with. But in that sentence, there was a comma. And he said, it's a gift. You have to receive it. And, and I tell people, like, in that moment, I feel the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And he said, welcome home. And it has been, like, ever since. So you, the next, so I don't respond. So at the end of the encounter, right, he does an altar call. And I have no context for what this is. Yeah. Right. So I don't know that I'm supposed to. Anyway, next week we're there. Now I've seen it. So now I kind of know how this flow goes. Um, what's so fun is that Sunday, uh, Pastor Josh Dotzer is bringing the word. And for those that don't know, he is one of our teaching pastors at Love Church North Omaha. And so it's so fun to look at how the Lord does things full circle. Yep. Um, right. So he gets to the end of the sermon. PT actually comes out do the, to do the altar call. And I'm like, I think, I think this is for me. I think that this is what this looks like. And so I respond, I come forward, I pray, and we go out and I'm just interacting with this dude. And I say to him, I was like, what do I do now? It's like, what? I'm like, what's next? <laughs> and so that was, you know, you talk about that light switch moment. Yeah. Like some people, it takes yep. time. For me, it was like, it was in a moment that Holy Spirit, man, like a hammer just cracked the wall. And it hasn't been the same ever since. I have to ask you, what what made you ask Christy or suggest to Christy that God was missing? I have no idea. Like, it, I don't know that there was a thought. Hmm. It was just a, like words that came out of my mouth. Wow. It was, hey, we've tried a lot of things. And I look, I can look back on it now and say, humanly, you know, I've been to counseling and to therapy and I've been on medications and all of these, like I've tried all of the human ways to be a better person. And I mean, at this point, like, you know me, like I'm a hard worker. Yeah. Like if I commit to something, like I can get it done. That was something I couldn't do. Like I couldn't be different. Yeah. And I didn't understand that it was because humanly, I can't get the stuff out of my heart until I know what it is and can confess my part of it, right? And so it was Holy Spirit. Because growing up with in and out of my grandparents' house, like I had exposure to God, right? I had experienced a lot of religion. Yeah. Um, I knew some of the stories. And so what I, what I thought I knew about God disqualified me from being part of the family. And it was only by the grace of God that he could say to me, he's like, no, you have to come home. Like, and so that's why even today, like probably my favorite parable in all of scripture is a prodigal son. Yeah. Because I look at my life and I squandered it right on wasteful living. Hmm. And then I came to my senses and I can't explain what that looks like other than, you know, when we read like the veil was lifted. Yep. And I was like, Hey, there's something there's something more that I'm supposed to experience 
and I don't think I can do it by myself. And so it must be God. Yeah, there's so many people on the other side of the screen that are even in this moment striving. Yeah. You know, you're you're sharing for you to your point. You're an achiever. Yes. You're going to do everything <laughs> in your control that you possibly can. Right. And it's the you couldn't work this problem. Right. There was really frustrating. There was nothing about it that you were like, "Man, I have control over this. I can get it done." God enters the picture. Right. In a profound way. And what I I think is interesting and what I think there are people right now sitting on the other side of their computer listening to your story saying, okay, well, then what? Yeah. Because once you got out of the way and chose to really surrender, I know know enough of your story to know that everything changed. Everything. So fast forward even to today, what has changed over the last seven years or eight Mm. years? Pride. It has to be, right? It was, like you said, I was so focused on me, right? And the the most interesting thing that I've learned about pride over these years is that it's simply thinking of myself too much. And so it's exactly what you said. I realized that mm-hmm. I was in the way of, you know, and not to say that I can hinder what God is going to do. Yeah. Right. Um, I had a revelation recently. I, I look at, you know, Jesus in the garden, Right. And he says, you know, Father, your will be done, not mine. And I think sometimes we take that to mean that somehow my will is going to outdo God's. Like his will is going to come to pass. It's whether or not I'm going to partner with it. Right. And so I think that's what has changed is that every day when I'm with him, right, that surrender grows deeper. And so I, I think about, you know, Love Church, we have our five S's. That's where it starts. Yep. I surrender daily to him and what he wants to do through me, right? Not just, all right, God, like do some stuff. But, you know, on the way, even today, we're listening to some worship and uh, we're listening to new wine, right? Like I want to be a vessel for his spirit. Like I want him to work through me. And the new song from Elevation, we were listening to Great Is, like I look at, the, like you said, the marks on my life, like yep. great is his faithfulness. And so you ask the question, like what has changed? And it's like, yes, everything, but it's, it's understanding that humility isn't, oh, I'm terrible. Yeah. It's he's awesome. Like he's the king and I just want to sit at his feet. Right. But, um, at the same time, I can't sit there forever. Yeah. Cause he's got stuff for me to do. Right. So sit and soak it up, get filled up and then go and do whatever it is that he's asked you to do and do it with, I would say, like reckless abandon, like with so much faith. Because he's with you in it that it makes you unstoppable. Yeah, because he's unstoppable. And that's like, that's what's changed is it's like. I don't have to do anything like he knows exactly what's up. Yeah. I think there are people that are watching that they see these different points in your story. And this is kind of what I want to go um, to a few of these different buckets, because I think there are people that are watching that say, I have a failed marriage. I have Mm. a second family. I think there are people that that are watching that have marriages who say, yeah, we were together and then we met Jesus and here we are. (laughs) I think there are adoptive parents that have kids that aren't their biological kiddos. I would just start by asking you, you mentioned uh, you and Christy's relationship. You know, I think it's fair to say dysfunction met dysfunction. Oh yeah. But it was, it was kinetic. It was like, man, you guys together, there was something profound about that. But then this shift happens. How has your guys' relationship been different? You added Jesus into the mix. Hmm. Like what dynamically, relationally, emotionally has changed over these these years of walking with Jesus? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is I look at my whole life and in pretty much every circumstance I find myself in, I end up leading in some capacity. And yet You didn't think you were one. Right. That's what's so wild. Is it you know, I mentioned earlier I was a Boy Scout. 
I was a 14 year old senior patrol. Like I led the whole thing. Yeah. You know? Um, and then, you know, you fast forward and it's like, I become a director at church and like, oh, but I would have been the first person. It's like, yeah, I'm not a leader. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not good at this. And, and so I think the thing that has changed the most is like, no, like son, right. This is the father speaks like, no son, you're a man. I made you to lead. Yeah. Your leadership doesn't have to look like pastor Adams or pastor Todd's or anybody else's. Yep. Your leadership is the leadership. The mantle that I gave you is specific for you. Yep. It's like, oh, <laughs> so lead your family. Yeah. And, and so the question that I ask myself is, it's like, am I giving my family the, a leader worth following? Yep. Because if it, it really doesn't matter any of the people that the Lord calls me to shepherd, if my family doesn't want to follow me because I'm not worth following, then no one should be following me. Yeah. And I think about what Paul said, like, follow me as I follow Christ. And that has been how I follow other leaders. As I see Christ in you, I follow. If I don't, I'm probably going to call it out as lovingly as I can. And so I think that what has been able to shift in Christy is that somebody that you can submit to. And I think about, right, it doesn't have to be authoritarian. I don't have to like dictate and direct and demand because that's just not the kind of person that I am. Yeah. And so we have this incredible steadiness between the two of us where, you know, I'm not a grand visionary. I appreciate grand vision. I love guys that, that can see 10, 15, 20 years down the line say, this is where we're going. I'm like, cool. What are we doing tomorrow to get there? Right. Like that's, I'm, I'm practical, like boots on the ground kind of guy. And that's what I love about, about us is that, and so I think that one of the things that I think has been key, even in our dysfunction, we love spending time together. Mm. Like there is no question, like she is my most favorite person on earth. There is no one that I would rather spend time with. Um, I enjoy spending time, right, with other people, but she's top choice. And it's my belief that, like, as we believe that of our spouse, like, this is my human, right? Scripture yep. says one flesh. Like, I don't want to cut my arm off. Right. Right? I, I appreciate that it's there um, as, as much as, like, I appreciate my wife in every capacity. Yeah. Um, you know, cause there is like, she can, she can coach and direct, right. Give me feedback that I can receive in a way that I can't receive it from anybody else. Because I know that when she sees me, she sees my potential. Yeah. And when my behavior falls short of that potential, she can lovingly say, it's like, I don't think that's what you meant. Right. Whether it was word, thought or deed. It's like, Oh, you're right. That wasn't, you know, and so I can grow from that. And so it's, yeah. it's just a constant, it's constant growth. Like I'm a lifelong learner, right? If I stop learning, it's, it's cause I stopped breathing. For sure. As we kind of wrap up today, I want to just ask, you know, as you, as you've shared your story, we, we kind of started with fresh start and yeah. we started with this idea now of, I mean, you grew up with a single dad yeah. that has since passed away. You're now remarried. And I would just ask you to take the next minute or two mm. to encourage people. They've heard your story today. They, they've they heard the building blocks, and yet here you are as someone who in this seat is glorifying God and saying, hey, you've been so faithful in spite of. Right. I would just love for you to take the next minute or so and encourage people through your story of how – if that's the place that they're in right now, what would you want them to hear? I think that in all of those seasons of my life, especially when I was separate from God, I wanted to know that I was enough. And so you're enough. The, the mistakes that you've made, the things that have been done to you, they don't define you. They are part of the experience and you will live out of them um, but their experience and we should learn from experience. Pastor Steve would often remind us that if God allowed it, 
I must have needed it, you know? And so like Romans 8, 28 has, has really been a scripture that I've been able to stand on. Cause it's like, he works all things for good. Yeah. For those that love him. Now here's what's interesting. He's going to work all things for good, right? We're going to experience that goodness because we love him. And so what I would say is wherever you're at, if you can even, you know, I think faith the size of a mustard seed, with that much faith, can you believe that he is good? Yeah. When he says that he's good, can you believe just that? Like make that be a starting place of the foundation for everything else, right? That he doesn't want harm to befall you. Yeah. And, and he grieves with us, right? That's, that's so beautiful about who Jesus was. Like he grieves with us in our pain. And so if I could have, if I could have received that yep. in those seasons, it's like, okay, I can get through this. And so it was interesting. I was sharing with somebody earlier. It's like this, this isn't my story. Yep. It's his, it's his beautiful story of, of his faithfulness to, to deliver me through some really wildfires. Wow. I'm just marked because I thank you so much for sharing your story today, because I think the thing that sticks out to me and I hope people take away is this is a, this is a testimony of the renewing of your mind yeah. and about perspective that we as believers can separate our circumstance and our identity and say, God, I don't always understand, but I know this situation and who you say I am, they're not the same. Mm -hmm. They're not connected. And to hear you say, this is a beautiful story written by God, marked by his faithfulness. I think there are so many people watching this today that wouldn't say, this is a beautiful story. And yet that's your beautiful perspective. And I, I hope today somebody listening to this, or they're gonna look back on their story and say, man, this is a beautiful story. Yeah. Man, it looked dark, it looked it just gloomy, and yet, God, I see you in every step of it. And we're just praising God for that yeah. in advance, you and I together right now. That's right. And uh, we're gonna take a quick second and pray over the people watching. Can we do that? Yeah, before we do that, I just want us all to remember the best stories, the best stories have conflict in them. For sure. If, they're not, if there's no conflict, it's not interesting, right? And so embrace your conflict. Wow. Well, God, we thank you so much. Thank you so much for Pastor Josh and who you've created him to be. That you, you knew that before he was ever born, that this was a purpose that you had, that you wanted to entrust him with. God, we, we pray right now, um, God, just for the binding up of his family, God, mm -hmm. that you're... You promise us that you're going to complete the good work that you started. And God, we see great work. We see incredible things happening, transformation in even areas of their family that they wouldn't expect. And so we just say thank you. Thank you for every single moment along the way that you, we can look back and see that you are present, even if we couldn't see it at the time. God, we thank you for this beautiful story. And we pray over every single person that's watching today that they would, they would just be marked that a, a, a gentleman whose dad was a hell's angel, was killed, murdered, was the son of a single dad, can stand here right now, sit here to share his story and say, I'm here to help people process the issues of their heart. Only you, God. It's, it's miraculous that, that the people on the other side of the screen today would just be encouraged. They would, their head would be lifted. I can do this. I, I can make it through. I, I can have the same kind of life transformation. We pray that those people would have an encounter with Jesus. We pray all this in your son's mighty and powerful name. Amen. Amen. I want to just say this, you know, we're, but uh, thank you for joining us. We'll place uh, the Fresh Start uh, website uh, below in the description below that if that, if, as you were hearing about that, if you were intrigued, if there was something that was stirred in you, uh, we just encourage you to visit the website in the description below and we can't wait to see you on the next episode.